Let us come before God seeking forgiveness and life. Steadfast and saving God, have mercy on us. We confess to you all the ways we turn from you and harm one another. In your compassion, forgive our sins and heal our hurts. Bring forth from us a harvest of righteousness, the fruits of gentleness and peacemaking, the sheaves of wisdom and justice, through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. In the name of Jesus, the Son of God, Receive mercy and find grace in your time of need. Your transgressions are forgiven. God's love is a healing balm for your wounds. Rejoice, for God raises you up to new life in Christ. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Share God's peace by greeting those around you. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. We gather to hear the word of God, pray for healing of every kind, spiritual, physical, and emotional, and ask God's blessing for health and wholeness through Christ our Lord. 
Let us pray. Great God, our healer, by your power, the Lord Jesus healed and gave hope. As we gather in his name, look upon us with mercy and bless us with your healing spirit. Bring us comfort in the midst of pain, strength to transform our weakness, and light to illuminate our darkness. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ, our crucified and risen Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Lord, grant your healing grace to all who are sick, injured, or disabled, that they may be made whole. Mend broken relationships and restore those in emotional distress to soundness of mind and serenity of spirit. Restore to wholeness whatever is broken in our lives, in this nation, and in the world. Hear us, O Lord of life. I invite you to come forward, sisters and brothers and receive a sign of healing and wholeness in the name of the triune God. You may be seated.
receive this blessing. Almighty God, who is a strong tower to all, to whom all things in heaven and earth bow and obey, be now and evermore your sure defense and help you to know that the name given to us for health and salvation is the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. I think we already shared the peace today, so you may be seated. The prayer of the day, the Lord be with you. Sovereign God, you have created us to live in loving community with one another. Form us for life that is faithful and steadfast and teach us to trust like little children, that we may reflect the image of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The first lesson is from the second chapter of Genesis. <clears throat> the Lord God said, it is not good that man should be alone. I will make him a helper as his partner. So out of the ground, the Lord God formed every animal of the field and every bird of the air and brought them to the man to see what he would call them. And whatever the man called every living creature, that was its name. The man gave names to all cattle 
and to the birds of the air and to every animal of the field. But for the man, there was not found a helper as his partner. So the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon the man, and he slept. Then he took one of his ribs and closed it up, closed up its place with flesh. And the rib that the Lord God had taken from the man, he made into a woman and brought her to the man. Then the man said, This at last is bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. This one shall be called woman, for out of man this one was taken. Therefore a man leaves his father and his mother and clings to his wife, and they, became, they become one flesh. The word of the Lord. Two weeks from now we're going to have Quilt Sunday, but we also have a batch of quilts that are on their way to St. Louis uh, as part of a collection, a gathering by Lutheran World Relief, not only quilts, but um, uh, health kits and um, school, school kits. And we pray that they will create beautiful messages of love to the people in our world who may be desperately seeking your word of grace and comfort. Today we renew our Christian promise to help those in need to feed the hungry, shelter the homeless, clothe the naked, comfort the weary and outcast, welcome the stranger, and be a loving neighbor to all the people of earth. Let us pray. Gracious Lord, you have taught us your truth through your Son, Jesus Christ. Bless these school kits wherever they may be sent, that those who use them may grow in knowledge and in skill. Yeah. Almighty God, it is your will to bring comfort and help to the distressed. Bless the quilts wherever they may be used, that they may provide warmth and security to those who have experienced tragedy or who have no other shelter. We are blessed to be a blessing. Creator, Lord, you have given us the gift of children. Bless the baby care kits and the personal care kits that whomever may receive them may have life and have it abundantly. By the power of your Holy Spirit, bring healing and strength to those who are ill. Bless the, the health kits that those who receive them will know the cleansing power of your love and grace. We are blessed to be a blessing. We ask that you bless the fruits of our labor and the whole work of Lutheran world belief, that together we may minister to your world in need. In your gracious name we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Our Holy Gospel is found in the Gospel of St. Mark, the 10th chapter. Some Pharisees came, and to test Jesus, they asked, Is it lawful for a man to divorce his wife? He answered them, What did Moses command you? They said, Moses allowed a man to write a certificate of dismissal and to divorce her. But Jesus said to them, Because of your hardness of heart, he wrote this commandment for you. But from the beginning of creation, God made them male and female. For this reason, a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. So they are no longer two, but one flesh. Therefore, what God has joined together, let no one separate. Then in the house, the disciples asked him again about this matter, and he said to them, Whoever divorces his wife and marries another commits adultery against her. And if she divorces her husband and marries another, she commits adultery. People were bringing little children to him in order that he might touch them, and the disciples stir spoke sternly to them. But when Jesus saw this, he was indignant and said to them, Let the little children come to me. Do not stop them, for it is to such as these that the kingdom of God belongs. Truly I tell you, whoever does not receive the kingdom of God as a little child will never enter it. And he took them up in his arms 
laid his hands on them and blessed them. The Gospel of the Lord. You may be seated. I'd like to invite the children to come up. Good morning. Look at this dirty old thing. Do you know what it is? Can anybody tell me what this is? <laughs> Surely someone knows what that is. A rug? It's a special kind of rug, though. Where do you find a rug like this, this size? Outside of a door. And what is it usually called? A welcome mat. You get the star for the day. Sometimes it says welcome. Sometimes it means, when people see it, wipe your feet before you come into this house. But I want you to think, when you see it, it says a big welcome. Uh, by the way, do you know where this one usually sits? Yeah. Right outside that door. We even welcome people coming in that door. Jesus puts out a welcome mat for everyone, okay, especially for you. Jesus says, welcome, I love you, you belong to me. Don't you think that's special? Let us pray. Repeat after me. Gracious God, we thank you for Jesus. We thank you that he welcomes us, especially children. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, you can go back to your seats. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. It's a story of an uh, eminent psychiatrist that was to testify in court. And when she got up on the witness stand, she did not notice that the chair was right up balancing on the, the, at the back legs, were just balancing on the edge of the witness stand. And she was sitting there, and the prosecuting attorney came up, and she, the prosecuting attorney said, would you state your name, please? And she lifted back her head, and that created just enough momentum for her to fall back and do a backward somersault and run into the exhibits behind and land on the table behind. And she finally picked herself up, straightened herself out, straightened her hair, got back up on the witness stand, put the chair where it would be safer, and then the prosecuting attorney said, well, let's start with a simpler question. Don't you wish today we could start with a simpler question? The Pharisees are asking Jesus a question about divorce. Don't you wish it was a simpler question? It's not a pleasant subject, is it? And we all, in some way or another, have been touched by divorce. If we haven't been divorced, at least a close friend and probably a very close relative has been divorced. But if you notice, Jesus doesn't answer the question outright. He goes to the very heart of the matter. Jesus is in the heart business 
Remember in the ser Sermon on the Mount, when Jesus talks about adultery, he suggests adultery isn't the problem, it's a heart problem. Lust is the real problem. When it comes to murder, it's not the murder that's the issue. It's a heart problem. It's the anger behind the murder. So Jesus goes just directly at the heart. And we see that when they ask him this question. And he says, well, what did Moses say? He gave a certificate of divorce, and Jesus said, he did that, not because of the hardness of the people back in Moses' day. He said, he, Moses did that because of the hardness of your heart, right to a heart issue. By the way, it's easy for us. Think of this as a bowling alley, and we have a gutter on each side. What are you supposed to do when you bowl? Avoid the gutter, right? And it's too easy for us to make this into a law. One, because we want to have a hard and fast rule so that we can, and, and by the way, this text isn't trying to answer all the ins and outs about divorce. There's an awful lot to be said about divorce. So we're not trying to answer all those questions. But it's too easy just to say, oh, I have a rule. This is what everybody must follow and I judge everybody according to that rule, the commandment. On the other hand, the other gutter is self-righteousness. Wow, you know, I've been married 39 years. What's your problem? Right? Self-righteousness. Jesus wants us to avoid them all. In fact, if we're honest with one another, all of us who are married have had those moments when we could have divorced. Tony Campalo, in his book of a few years ago, 20 Hot Potatoes Christians Are Afraid to Touch. He says this, I personally believe that most married couples inevitably come to a time when they wonder why they ever got married in the first place and think that it would be a relief to be free again. There comes that morning when the guy wakes up and looks across the bed to see his wife still asleep, her hair hanging down over her face, her mouth half, half open, and he asks, how did I, how did I get into this? Or perhaps she wakes up first to see her unshaven husband with, as in my case, no hair hanging down over his face. And she asks, is this what I'm stuck with for the rest of my life? It's usually not the looks that bother us, although that might be something. Do I want to put up with all this abuse, right? But... And my point is, when we come to these heart issues, Jesus wants us to see, just like Martin Luther said, that we're all beggars, begging for a piece of bread, begging for that grace, that mercy. We're all beggars. We need to treat one another that way. Jesus, whenever he dealt with these issues, well, I should stay on, on track. He talked about vulnerable people. The reason when Jesus asked, what did Moses say? Well, Moses gave us a certificate of divorce. You know what a certificate of divorce did? It was given to the woman to protect her. Because without being connected to a man in Moses' society, she was lost, homeless, helpless. But at least with that certificate, 
she had some legitimacy and she was able to remarry only because she was given a certificate of divorce. She, otherwise, she was extremely vulnerable. A few uh, years ago, a woman came to us, just out of the blue, came to the office, and she was crying and she was desperate. And uh, she told us her story. She first met with me that her boyfriend, who she had been living with, who she had a child with, had just kicked her out of the house, kept the child, but kicked her out of the house. She had no place. Will you help me? She had no place to go. I got uh, Marcy involved, and we both were able to help her. The reason I bring her up is that a couple of months ago, she gave me a call and said, do you remember me? And I don't remember her name, but she started telling me how it was that she came to us. And she came to us because she heard that we might help her. And she says, I want you to know, I got my life together. And boy, she sounded confident and happy. She said, I have my children now. She said, I'm not a Lutheran, I'm a Baptist. <laughs> but I always was a Baptist. And she lives 30 miles away. And she said, I have a job now. And she said, I remember what you told me. That I needed to live my life in a way that I wasn't so vulnerable or someone could kick me out of my own house. And she said, I've been doing that. And I, she said, I just wanted you to know that my life is back together and I just wanted you to know I was thankful. Vulnerable people. Well, the women, and sometimes women still are very vulnerable in our society. And Jesus said, for that reason, Moses, because of your hardness, kicking women out of the house, because of your hardness of heart, Moses gave that commandment. So we're not supposed to be hard-hearted. When Jesus dealt with these issues, he dealt with people. He didn't deal with law. He dealt with people. Just think, when he found, uh, visited the woman at the well in John chapter 4, had, had five husbands, Jesus didn't give her a lecture on divorce. He instead proclaimed to her the gospel. And she was so overjoyed, she ran back to her town. And the whole town came out to see Jesus. And they begged him to stay and share the gospel some more. When the woman in John chapter 8 was caught in adultery, the Pharisees wanted to stone her. And Jesus said, let the first one who is without sin cast the first stone. She too was given a second start by Jesus. Go and sin no more. A fresh start. No condemnation. So there's live people behind these issues. Well, we learn. I've learned in marriage, 39 years, that God is a great teacher. And he uses marriage to teach us. If we happen to be blessed by being married. And sometimes it is so difficult but we learn love. We learn 
to put someone else first before us. So marriage, living with and for someone else, has the power to fire within us the deepest and most powerful surges of love that we can ever experience in this life. So if things start going bad, don't harden your heart. It's the time to open your heart to God and say, Dear God, teach me to love. Teach me to receive your love and teach me to love. As I said in the Gospel of Mark, Mark has a way of having Jesus give a teaching and then we have an episode with the disciples going exactly against that teaching. In the next episode, people are bringing children to Jesus. Again, extremely vulnerable people in Jesus' day. They bring children to Jesus. And the disciples, uh, our text says they sternly spoke to them. They rebuked them, said, get out of here, you kids. And Jesus said, no, bring them to me. And he blessed them. What do we find from children? Jesus says, unless we come as children with that complete trust and dependence upon people, we're going to have those hardened hearts that just never get anywhere with God's kingdom and God's love. I, um, Ron Rollheiser tells the story of a, of a father who had sort of, in a way, hardened his heart toward his son. His son was 14 years old, and his wife started saying, your son needs you. Spend some more time with him. He goes, he doesn't need me. He's got his own life. And besides, it's time he started breaking away from the family a little bit, being his own self. But he said, all right. So he goes, and his son is watching TV, and he says, son, do you want to go to the grocery store with me? And lo and behold, the son says, sure. I'll, I'll come. It was more out of boredom than anything. Gets in the car. The father's trying to talk to him. How's school? Oh, fine. Uh, how's basketball going? Oh, it's okay. Doesn't say much. They get to the store, they buy their few items, $19 worth, get in line, and there happens to be a clerk who's busy talking to another clerk. And he's taking forever. And it's irritating everybody in line, including this father. So when the clerk counts up his stuff, he puts down a $50 bill. And then the clerk starts talking to the other clerk. So he switches it for a 20. The clerk gives him change for a 50. So $19 worth of groceries, and he's still going home with 20, $31. And before they walked away, the man said, you know, I switched that 50 for a 20. Here's your change back. And the clerk said, oh, thank you, thank you. And everybody around him said, you should have kept the money. This guy's irritating us. You should have kept the money. But, and the father just said, no, no. And he goes out to his car and his son says, dad, that was neat. And then all of a sudden his son is talking about basketball and what they're doing in basketball. And he's talking about school and some of the kids in school. And the father has to admit he's not listening much because he's thinking, if I didn't have my son with me, I probably would have kept the money. And then he's thinking, my son needs me, yes, 
but oh, how desperately I need Him. Our children soften our hearts if we allow it and teach us to put someone else first and teach us love. Our children truly have the power to fire within us the deepest and most powerful surges of love that we can ever experience in this life. Marriage, children, all coming from vulnerable, vulnerability in our society. Don't harden your heart. Amen. Living together in trust and hope, we confess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who is conceived. resurrection of the body and the life everlasting. Amen. Alive with God in Christ, we pray for the church, those in need, and all of God's creation. Holy and loving God, 
through the cross of Christ, continue your redeeming and unifying work among your people. Soften our hearts when they grow hard and show us how to live well with each other as one family. Lord, in your mercy. God of mercy and peace, we pray for our country and those around the world. We especially remember the people of Roseburg, Oregon, who are healing after another mass killing. Our hearts ache after the news that five doctors from Doctors Without Borders were killed in a bombing raid in Afghanistan. Send your peace into our hearts and into our world. Lord, in your mercy. Walk faithfully with those who find great joy in relationships and with those who experience the pain of broken relationships. Make the church a place where all people may come to know loving companionship. Lord, in your mercy. God of life, Jesus welcomed children and blessed them. Help us to be your people of blessing and help us to continue to love and cherish all your vulnerable children. By your presence, sustain their hope. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayers for those who need healing. We remember especially Katie Brady, Linda Brashear, Karen Cleave, Kite Coulter, Jeff Dykeman, Shannon Eggleston Leff, April Hollinger, Jennifer Stilwell Jackson, Cindy Jones, Dustin Jones, Jim Lampy, Ellen Malcolm, Katie Mayberry, Lynn Peterson, Lori Pettit, John Reynolds, Amy Robb, Florence Stilwell, Kylie Timmerberg, Steve Weimer, Ann Wilbur, and Logan Young. Are there any others? We bless you for the lives of believers through whom you have revealed your love to the world. Continue to reveal your hope to those who mourn, especially the family and friends of Robert Henry Warren. Lord, in your mercy, gather these concerns and all who are in need into your abundant care, O God, remembering your promise of mercy through Christ our Lord. Amen.
For God, as grains of wheat scattered upon the hills were gathered together to become one bread, so let your church be gathered together from the ends of the earth into your kingdom. For yours is the glory through Jesus Christ, now and forever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior, Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death in the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so, with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the forgiveness, for the remembrance of me. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses, and we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. All is ready. Our Lord invites us. Please come. You may be seated.
body of Christ given for you. The body of Christ given for you. The body of Christ given for you. body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. that you welcome us to your table and satisfy our deepest hunger and thirst. By your gifts of word and holy meal, strengthen us to take up the cross as we go about our callings in this world, following after Jesus Christ, our servant Lord.
I encourage you to um, read your bulletin. Remember next Saturday, October 10th, there is the Campbell Corn Maze. And on the 26th, we're having Trunk or Treat. Or is it the 25th? It's the 25th, whatever that Sunday is. Women of the ELCA um, display in the uh, fellowship hall. Thank you. Receive this benediction. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the grace that sustains every breath we take. The love of God that gives us courage and strength and the abiding presence of the Holy Spirit that fills our hearts with comfort and peace be with you and all those you care about, now and forever. Amen. Guided by the gospel, we go in peace, live in love as Christ loved us.